What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host BJ Dell and I'm back with another drawing tutorial in my new series, which shows you how to draw the entire alphabet, every single letter as an animal that begins with that letter, all in real time and all using the iPad and Procreate. Today's letter H and I'm gonna show you how to draw this cute cartoon horse. Shout out to Arf World who made the suggestion for the horse for the letter H, which brings me to the point, if you've got an idea for an upcoming animal that you wanna see, for the letter I through Z, definitely leave a comment down below. You might see your idea brought to life in one of these upcoming videos. But today, it's all about the horse, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so starting out, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas for my brushes today. I'm gonna be using my Essential Creator set for Procreate. It's available on Gumroad, links down in the description below. We're gonna start out sketching with the Brainstorm sketch brush. Switch over to the smooth inker and then the soft rendering later on in the tutorial. And then finally for the color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made. So if you want to download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial, you can get that for free. If you go to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, you'll find that and it's all linked down below too. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're doing H and I want to get the actual H there in the background. So we'll go up here to our actions menu. We're gonna go over to add, and then we're going to add text. We'll go ahead and hit H, and then we'll double tap on that. And then we'll hit our font up here to change that. We're gonna go over to Arial, so we'll switch there, and then we're gonna to go to bold. Then I'm gonna grab the arrow to resize this, and with uniform selected down here, we're just gonna stretch this out and make it bigger. I've also got snapping turned on, so we've got the orange lines to let us know when it's centered there. Shrink it down just a little bit. All right, so we got the, both the vertical and the horizontal. Hit the layers to lock it in, and there we go. Now to sketch, I'm gonna grab layer one, I'm gonna hold down and drag it above the text layer. And then we're gonna hit the end for blend mode and drop down the opacity of the text layer down to about 15%. Wanna be able to see it as a guide, just don't want it to be too dark. All right, now we're ready to sketch. So with this H for horse, I kinda of see this being the neck of the horse coming up into the head here. We'll kinda of have him looking back in this direction over top of the body, which will be this bar of the H. Have the front legs coming down here back legs here, kind of the hind end here, and then this part of the H will have the tail just kind of standing straight up and down. So now that we've got an idea of what we want to go with, we'll start out with some basic shapes here, just to start to visualize our horse. So we've got an oval here for the head. We'll do another oval kind of angled into the right here. That'll be the snout. We can kind of connect those so you can kind of see what I'm visualizing there. And we'll bring the curve here around the head. And then just kind of straight down. I'm gonna make this very kind of angled. Some hard lines just to keep the, the shape of that H in there. Bring the, the neck down here and then back around here for the top of the body and as we get back to that bar here coming up we'll start to curve that back around and then bring that down for the back legs bring this around and then start to kind of curve that in for the body and i'm going to drop it a little bit lower than the h here, I think that's gonna be just be a little too goofy, a little too thin for the, the horse's body. So we'll just bring it in like this. All right. Now for the front leg here, go ahead and get this in here, just following the, the back line here. Kind of angle that front one there. Then I'll kind of pull a little curve there for that one. For the one in the rear here, bring that down kind of more straight here. As these come down, we'll kind of 
pull them out like this and then back in and then we'll have the the hooves down here so it's kind of like a uh, oval there with a V upside down there and that V because of perspective we've got going on it's gonna veer a little bit more towards that left hand side we'll pull this one down to see it's not right in the middle it's more here towards the left all right same thing here we'll bring in this hind leg kind of have a curve here bring this down out and back in that hoof in here and same thing here for this one all right so we've got that one in there now for the tail for this backside I'll kind of have this coming straight up and down once again just to keep that shape of the H in here and then for the front part We'll kind of curve it there. Let's get a little bit more curve to the front, and we'll probably throw some kind of like strand hairlines in there. All right, moving on to the head then. I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see a little bit better on the head as we start to detail this. I'll just darken this up a little bit. So I think for the, the snout here, we'll have this come around as it comes back up, it'll come out further than this line here, so it's kind of got a smile to it. We'll do a little curve there for the smile, and we'll bring around kind of a half oval there in the back. We'll bring this one down for the bottom of the mouth, and maybe another curve line there for that bottom lip. And here we'll get a kind of ovally shape for the nostril match that up here on the right hand side now bringing the snout up into the head here kind of help us with the eyes so get an oval in here for one of the eyes an oval here for the other and then we can kind of darken these up then just like that kind of pull a Part of the eye there underneath kind of like a bag under that eye we'll do the same thing on this one kind of bring that around then i think i want kind of a tough to hair here before it hits the mane so we'll get a curve line here for that kind of bring it up and back down get this fancy hairdo going on We'll kind of block in the ears then with some ovals here. Kind of get those in there. I'm just roughing this in. We'll really worry about the details once we get in here and start to add the inks. A couple of strand lines in there. And then we'll do a brow here to kind of connect that. All right, ovals in here for the pupils. Iris is coming around there. Maybe a couple of eyebrows here on top. Let's give them a little bit more personality there. All right, continuing back here then, we'll bring out some curved tapered lines for the mane. So we've got this nice thick flowing mane here in the back. Bringing that down into the body there. Just darkening things up as we go to see them a little bit better here. And this is really loose, really rough. We're gonna really fine tune this once we get to that ink stage next. So if you're looking at it now and saying, hey, it doesn't look that great, that's it's on purpose. 
All right, so let's go ahead and turn off the H in the background. That's what we're left with for our sketch. I'm gonna grab the arrow again and just kind of recenter this because since we went off of the, uh, looks like we might have a little bit of a line somewhere here in the back because it's not getting the whole thing as close as it should. That's better. So now we can kind of recenter this. There we go. So there is our sketch. From here then, we're ready to go ahead and add the inks. So let's do that next. So to begin this, we'll come up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna make a new layer on top of our layer one. We're gonna do the same thing here as we did before with our sketch. We're gonna hit the end for the blend mode and drop down that opacity down to about 25%. And then we're ready to start inking on layer three. So first thing we need to do, go to our brush and we're going to select the smooth inker. Now with this, I think I might have, yeah, I've got streamline turned on. It's up to you if you wanna have this on or off. So if you tap that brush and bring up the brush studio, you can go to stabilization and streamline is just gonna help you kind of work out the, the handshake that you might have. If you've got some kind of shaky lines that's going to help you with those i'll leave that on personally for these videos i like to have it on just because i can draw a little bit slower and explain as i go and i don't have the shake that you normally would if you're drawing slow a lot of times if i'm just drawing in a non youtube tutorial setting i'll leave it off just because i draw really quick and i like that like quick organic feel that you don't get with it turned on, but it's totally up to you. So let's zoom in here closer so we can see. And I think I'll just start here on the snout. I'm gonna bring in a tapered line here around and back up. And for tapers like this and this, the technique is basically just pressing softer, lighter as you start the stroke, letting up pressure as you get to the end if you want tapers on both ends. If you're not getting the same effect and you have these brushes, it's just uh, something that comes down to practice. It's probably the most asked question that I get. Hey, I'm not getting the same tapers as you are in the videos. What am I doing wrong? Are these, do I need to change a setting or something like that? And that's not the case at all with the, the idea of you know these custom brushes is you are using the exact same settings as I am and it just comes down to something that you gotta get used to doing. I'll bring these around, trying to match them up, just the, the shape and size wise that makes sense from left to right. It's one of the keys for the cartoon eyes or any eyes in in particular just uh with the perspective that you got going on want to make sure that they they match up and make sense perspective wise continue and bring these up i always like here like this this eyebrow of course the eyebrow is not going to come over top of the hair in, in real life, but I just always think that that's a hilarious way to do eyebrows. Having it come over top of that hair is just something you can get away with in cartoons. And that's why I like cartoons is just being able to stretch some of those, you know, real life rules and how things are. And you can do things that you usually can't do <laughs> in, in realistic drawings. I'm gonna go ahead and hold down here in the background to select white, and I'm gonna add in some oval highlights to the insides of the eyes here. Do a bigger one up top, and then a smaller one there at the bottom. And then I'm gonna switch back to the black here. All right, continuing on here, go ahead and get the ear. This inside part here is gonna be a thinner line weight than what we have on the outside. Connect those lines. That line for the top of the head there where everything connects. Get 
that ear in there. Pull them back so you can see where we're at. Everything looks pretty good so far. All right, now this is where I like to go in and I like to make another layer. So I'm gonna go in and hit the plus here because this line here, as it comes down and around, I like to start this line past what I've already drawn here. And of course, I'm gonna be overlapping lines that I've already drawn and I'm gonna have to erase. And it's gonna be really hard to make sure that everything lines up perfect and I'm not erasing stuff that I've already done. So making another layer then allows me to start this line up here, bring it down just like that. And then holding down on the eraser, we'll select the same brush that I'm using here. I can quickly go in there and just knock that line out. I can use the, the same technique here for the body as this comes down. So I can start right there, I can start further up. I can bring this down. And then with the eraser, I can come back in there. Oops, went too far. Knock out that line and I don't have to worry about hitting those parts that I've already done. For the hair on the mane back here, same thing. Using a new layer. Now that I've got these done, I'm gonna pinch these together. So they're all in one. So I'm on a new layer here. Nothing's on this layer right now. You can use the same technique here and start to pull these lines around. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit tighter so we can see better. Zooming in is, I think, one of the best features besides the undo of digital art because you can get in there really tight and make sure all of your lines look super sharp. The better that they look zoomed in, the better that they're gonna look when you're zoomed out. So I really urge you to, to zoom in and out as much as you can. I zoom in and out so much more than I do in these videos because I know it makes them kind of hard to follow if I'm zooming in and out constantly. But if you're at home, I really, really urge you to use it as much as possible. So now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and do some of these tapered lines for the hair strands. So I'm gonna start here with kind of a, a thicker, harder press, and then we're gonna taper them out. Or if you want, you can start with the thinner press and go harder with the, the pressure as you go up. And then you can just erase those overlaps and you see how nice that is, not having to worry about those lines that you've already drawn. Just get some nice curves in there. All right, I'm gonna pull them back out. You can kind of see what we've got there. We'll do the same thing up here to the top. I'm gonna to twist my canvas. This is another thing I love about digital art is that your hand is naturally in your arm. It's gonna to wanna to move in a certain direction, a lot more comfortable than another direction so if you feel like you're fighting against yourself twist the canvas around until you've got a, a stroke that comes naturally to you and then flipping back around you can see what we've got there so still on the same layer then let's do the tail because we can erase the overlaps again so bring that tail down same thing here twisting just a little bit Bring that around, kind of tidy that end up just a little bit. Erase those overlaps. And same thing here, get some tapered lines coming down. And you'll see with these, I just use different lengths. I don't want all of them to be exactly the same and different curves too. Okay, so now that we're done there, I'm gonna pinch everything back together so we've got all of the inks on the same layer now. And we'll make another new layer to kind of continue the same process so we can do the overlaps. I am gonna erase that back just a little bit. All right, so now we're on this new layer. Continue here to bring everything up and around. Some tapers there. Work on the, the hooves down here. We'll bring that out a little bit further. We'll zoom in really tight here so we can see. Kind of 
kind of diagonal line there in the back to knock in that perspective. Just like that. And we'll move over to this other side. And I think I want those to connect instead of taking that into the the hoof there. Diagonal line there. And same thing there. All right, pull them back out. You can see where we're at. So now we've just got this line here. So same thing here, just gonna pinch these together. They're all in one, new layer. And this is really good because I can start this line here because this is gonna connect here, but it's not gonna connect because we've got this leg in front. So I can start the line here to know where it's gonna begin at, and then just kind of follow it down and around, just like that. And I can use the eraser. Actually, I think it's kind of angled up that way. I'm gonna try it one more time here, have it a little bit more straight or coming back down. It's not gonna erase the overlap there. Erase the overlap here. Then I've got an overlap here, but that's on the other layer. So I'm gonna to go to layer three and erase the overlap there. Now, coming back to the layers, I can pinch those together. I can turn off my sketch, and then we're just left with our inks and our final design. So from here, we're ready to start the color flats. So let's do that next. So to begin the color flats, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna come underneath layer three and make a new layer. It's gonna be the first color flat layer. Layer three then, we're gonna tap this and set it as reference. So this is gonna allow us to drag and drop our color flats onto layer four or any other layers we make underneath. So we'll come up here to our color palette then, we're gonna to switch to this first brown color on that first line, drag and drop this in here. You can also use continue filling so you don't have to keep dragging and dropping. And then from here then, you can just tap on the areas to fill them in. Then I'm gonna color those in on a separate layer, the back ones. So we'll make another new layer by hitting that plus button. And then we'll just drag and drop those. That'll help us when we go in to add some, some shadows and highlights there. All right. So we'll switch over to this darker brown now. Back up to our layers menu, new layer, drag and drop. Drag and drop. We've got those in there. Another new layer then. Use the next color here for the snout. Nostril back here. I'm gonna zoom in here really tight so we can get the inside of this ear. It's gonna be hard to get. And you'll see here too, as I zoom in, I'm getting these white lines around the edges. So the reason that is, is because of my color drop threshold. And that's why it's good to zoom in a lot is because I could not see that as I dragged and dropped these in to begin with. So once again, I cleared everything out. So we're back to this layer. So let me get in here tighter to explain this. I know a lot of you might know this already, but you see the white lines here. So to fix that, when you drag and drop, keep your Apple Pencil held down. You'll see the threshold right now is at 0%. As I slide this, watch what happens here to that white section. As I slide this, that white section slowly disappears as this number gets bigger. If you go too far, it's going to fill in everything. So if it does that, you know you went too far. So like there, 95% looks pretty good. And then pull them back out, you can kind of see here. So now we don't need to zoom in as much because we know once we do this again, it's still set at that 95%, so we're good. But yeah, if you are getting those lines on the edge, that is why I did want to do those on a new layer though. So we're going to make a new layer. Drag and drop these in. New layer for those back legs too. I want to do that. So a new layer there. The brown for the body. 
New layer again. The snout color there. Once again, I'm going to zoom in here so we can make sure that those are filled in. Small areas like this, I just like to color in by hand because if you're dragging and dropping and you hit those lines, it's going to fill the edge of those lines and you're not going to realize it if once again if you're zoomed out once you zoom in then you can see yeah i made a mistake and if you get too far along in your process it's totally going to ruin your design so all right another new layer then here did i get the inside of that here yeah another new layer i'm going to turn off the background color so you can see the eyes aren't colored in so we need to do those so white for the eyes And get those in there and then another new layer here got the blue for the irises there and then finally one more new layer and we'll go to the gray got to do those hooves in the background so turn on the background color here get these filled in and then same thing here, I'm gonna make another new layer and color in the back ones on a separate layer. That'll make the uh, shadows and highlights a little bit easier having those split up. So there we go. One thing I'm not super big on right now is looking at the, that crease under this eye. So I think I'm gonna go back to the lines layer and we'll kind of rework this a little bit before we get too far. Now, as I erase this, you'll see it's starting to erase the colors because since we use that reference, it blocked that part out. So now we can go in here to that body layer. We can just color that in. And I don't think that looks too off having that come out there and not having it on the other side. I think that it works, but it just looked a little wonky having that on that side so all right so we've got our color flats in from here we're ready to start on our shadows and our highlights so to begin the shadows and the highlights I'm gonna see let's start on start on the body so we'll make a new layer here on top of the body and we're gonna set this to clipping mask so this allows us to color in on layer 12 and it's only gonna show up on the parts that are colored in on layer 4 so I've been, for this series, I've been using mostly the uh, soft rendering brush and kind of doing a, a more rendered kind of airbrush technique for shading on this. I think I want to do uh, a, a cell shaded technique like I've done in a lot of my previous videos. So we're going to use this dark brown color right here to begin with. We're going to leave reference turned on for now, and then I'm just going to drag and drop. Oops. We're on the top layer here. Let's do the, the back legs first. So let's move this layer above. So if I hold down, we'll drag and drop. So we've got these kind of shadowed in. So for this, I kind of see the light source coming in from this top right hand corner. So we'll have highlights here and here, here, and then the shadows are going to be back here. Of course, these legs we just filled in and these back hooves as well. But of course, that's a little too dark. So what we want to do is we want to come up to our layers menu and we want to hit N for blend mode and we're going to drop down the opacity of this. So I think 44, 45% looks good. We want it to be darker than our main color, but we just don't want it to be too dark. With that done then, I'm going to go to my eraser and I'm going to start to erase just the edge of that part that we filled in. So you can tell now that that does have a shadow to it and it kind of brings out that shadow a little bit more by having that rim lighting there on the edge it just kind of makes that pop a little bit more all right so now back to that layer for the main body we'll make a new layer there i want to take note here for this we set that opacity let's do the 45 so it's easier to remember because we're going to use that same opacity then on this layer first though we need to go ahead and tap that set that to clipping mask and then i'm going to start to bring around curve here with the brush 
And now I'm going to turn off reference on layer three. So I'm going to go up here, tap that, and then tap off reference. Now that that's turned off, I've got this area kind of blocked out. I can drag and drop that into there. If I did not have that reference turned off, it just would have filled in the entire body, that brown again. Use my eraser just to hit that. Kind of a tapered curve there. And we'll continue this line up down here. It's kind of hitting all these back sections which we will erase some of this here shortly. We'll bring this up underneath there. All right, I'll drag and drop the color in there and it fills in. I'm gonna kind of fine tune this now. It's really narrow here and it gets really thick up there so I want to kind of keep that same narrowness until it starts to get wider there underneath the, the head. And then we'll go up here to our layers menu and drop that opacity down to that 45. So that matches the one that we already did. I'm actually gonna bring this even further back on the eye. zoom in here so we can see a little bit better and pull it around. You can see here now that I zoomed in, I missed a little bit of that part when I erased that inks line. That's why I said zooming in and out is, is really, really key to making sure that your design is sharp and as professionally finished as possible. All right. Kind of continue here and around. I'm gonna pull a little bit of a shadow backside here. Comes down and underneath into the neck. Pull it back a little bit more there. And let's see what else here. Probably pull a little bit here. Once again here, I'm not going to the edge because I don't want that to jut up against the shaded in section down there because it's just gonna kind of blur together. So doing a big chunk like this will allow it to be shaded in have a shadow on there without hitting that part that I've already done. All right, that looks good. Gonna continue here some more. I wanna kinda join these a little bit here. I'm gonna pull in this around and back up. have those combined as those come around. I think this, I might widen that out here. It's more like that. Actually, I'm gonna just taper that into that area. So I started out having that, like I said, a really thin line there. And as I got more into it, it just kept building up and building up. And I think that looks a little bit better on the screen. It's looking a little bit darker than what it does on my iPad screen. So I'm going to drop down the opacity just for you at home watching. I'm actually going to drop this down to 25. I think that shows up on screen a little bit better. It was looking a little too dark, but I think that looks better on screen. All right, so that's going to be it there. Let's go ahead and do some erasing here on the edge of the ear. We will have the light hitting that. So we'll erase there a little bit. And I think that's going to be pretty good for the shadows there. 
Let's go ahead then and move on to, let's do the snout next. So we'll make a new layer here. Tap that, and once again, clipping mask. For this, we'll use that same color. Just gonna look a little bit different because of the colors of this being different. You can see some white there that I missed on the snout. All right, so that clipping mask layer here. shadows in there drop the opacity of this down now down about 35 percent 36 percent looks pretty good side of the nostril here we'll do the same thing here inside these sections of the ears some shadow in there and that's it for that color then or that layer so next up let's do the the main so we're gonna go to layer 5 new layer tap that one set that as clipping mask and this one will use this darker color here. Kind of like a grayish color with some red hues in there. Just coming underneath those tapered lines with other tapers then. some down here at the bottom and you can also bring up tapered lines as well if you want to do some strands for this layer you can pull some of those out as well all right before we go too much further then I want to drop the opacity so in for blend mode bring this down about 36 percent I think looks pretty good Pull in some more shadows here and around there. Get in here under this. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger here. Drop it back down now. those and then we'll do the same thing here on the tail so I'm once again making it bigger here we'll just get some of the tapered lines following those lines and those will appear on the left hand side of those ink strand lines just because of the light source and the direction that we've got coming in That looks good. Next up, we've got the, the hooves down there. So layers menu. Let's do the, the back ones first. I'm gonna turn reference back on now on layer three, the lines layer, just so on these, we're gonna make the new layer and then tap and clipping mask. And once we do that, then we can just drag and drop that into there and fill it in really quick. We can turn off reference again now, and then we'll just need to drop the opacity of that layer. So I think 36% looks pretty good. Going in with the eraser then, we can do the same thing that we did on the legs there. Whoops, the wrong layer. We can just pull back on the edges of those, kind of a rim light there. Just pull those back. 
And then we need to do these. So layer 10, new layer, tap, clipping mask. I'll get inside those Vs first. Then we'll drop the opacity by going back to the layers menu, N for blend mode, bringing that down. I think we had, what, 35? Let's see what we had, 36%. There we go. Now here, what we can do too, if you wanna use the selection tool and freehand, you can also, like this section here that I drew, you can also do that with the selection tool. So we can kind of make a, a funky shape here, lock it in, and then you can drag and drop that in. This also allows you to get some nice tapers. And then if you don't like it, you can clean it up with the brush or go back in, or the eraser, sorry, and then go back in with the brush and then kind of fine tune it. And same thing here. Kind of pull that around and connect it, and drag and drop. And then back to the, the eraser just to kind of fine tune. Maybe not have it come all the way to the bottom here. It's up to you if you like to use this te technique or if you just like to use the, the brush to do everything. Whichever one works for you is A-OK. -okay. Maybe do a, an oval one there and there. All right. Finally then, we've got the, the eyes and the irises. So layers menu, layer eight. We'll make a new layer here, tap. Once again, clipping mask. This one though, we're gonna do a little bit different. We're gonna come up here to our color palette. I've got the blue. We're gonna switch over here to the soft rendering brush now. And we're just gonna lightly pressing the, the against the screen. I'm gonna use this middle 15% preset. Just gonna slowly build up that blue around the eye. I'll drop down the size here now for the smaller one here. Slowly build that up. Do the same thing now for layer nine, the iris, new layer, clipping mask. And I've got this kind of darker color here. Start here at the bottom. I'm gonna make this even smaller, maybe about 2%. Just gonna bring that up from the bottom. Same thing here on this side. Just kind of fades in so it goes from dark to light. It makes it look just a little bit more interesting. All right, then finally for the uh, the snout here, layer seven, we'll go ahead and make another new layer here. And you're gonna see it's automatically clips to this layer because this one's clipped. When I make that new layer, it puts this one in between the two, automatically sets it as clipping mask. Then we've got this kind of red color here. We're gonna use that same brush that we were using. I just wanna give his snout here just a little a little shade of pink in there. Let's get that right in the center there. A little bit on the bottom. I'm going to use the eraser and just pull it away from the nostril here. And I'm on the wrong layer as I was talking about things. You see what happened there. Because we're not on the clip layer, it just actually erased the snout here. So let's try that again here. Build that up slowly here in the center. So a little bit down here underneath. I think that looks good. Make it a little bit smaller here. We'll do a little bit on the insides of the ears too. Just give them a little bit more color. Then I'm gonna use the soft rendering smudge and just kind of smudge those in. All right, and there we go. So that's it for the uh, the shadows then. Let's go ahead and knock in some highlights real quick. So same technique here. If you want to, you can make new layers on top and set them as clipping mask as well or in between. I'll just do it on the same layer to save layers here. So we'll do the body first. I've got this kind of brighter color here. 
switch back to the uh, the smooth anchor and then just kind of bring in highlight around here now with this you might want to do these on separate layers just because this is automatically going to have the same opacity that we use for the shadow so this might not be bright enough or it might be too bright and you can't control this separately because like i said this is all in the same layer it's already set so this is where you know having two layers does come in pretty handy so if you want to have more control that's going to be kind of key to that i'm going to draw kind of a highlight here the back side that might be a little bit too much Let's pull in just a smaller one here. Looked a little too big, and then using the eraser, we can kind of fine tune it. There we go. Get some around the eye here. The ears part of that, or are they a different one? They're a different one. No, they're part of that. Get one there. And get across the bridge here. Okay. Onto the tail then. This one I am going to use a a separate layer because this is because it's a darker color here, it's gonna look wildly different than the shadow color that we used and it's going to need a, a different opacity setting for sure because it is so much lighter than our main base color these in here all right one more here then to the layers menu, drop that opacity down pretty low. Like that one's 18, 19%. And you can kind of see the difference there. So if we had that as the other one, obviously the 18% is gonna look a lot different than the 35. Getting some highlights here on the front. One there, we'll start to pull some in here too, just for the strands. Some of those around there and then using the eraser just to kind of fine tune all right looks good and then the snout here do another new layer and this one i'm just going to use white for the highlights along the front because once again going to be really different as far as the colors go between this and then that dark color in the back. So we'll drop that down to about 34%. That looks good. And finally, just the, the hooves down here, which we don't need too much because there's not gonna be a lot of light hitting those. And these I'm just gonna do on the same layer again. Maybe, we'll see, I'm using that white still. Yeah, we'll just do a little bit there, a little bit there. And I'm not going to do any in the back. And then finally, layer three, I'm just going to make a new layer here. I'm going to switch back to my black. And this is where I like to go in and just add any extra lines or details. So here you could bring in some, some little hair lines there across the tail and the, the mane. Uh, we could add in some extra lines here. Since we dropped that other one out around the eye, we could just add like a little small one there at the bottom. We could add some dots for some texture here. Maybe around the snout, you could add some as well. Whatever you think that you need just to, to bring home the design. You make some smaller ones in there. Same thing here, you can add some 
stray hairs coming off the ends there on the the hooves down here you can add in some cross hatching you can see here as I zoom in too I missed <laughs> a section of color there that's why I know a lot of people say I, I hate it how much you zoom in and out so I've tried to to uh, stop doing that over the years but I'll tell you what it makes your designs look a lot worse if if you do that so and you can tell just how jagged those lines looked you're really doing yourself a disservice and I'm sure you know people sitting at home say oh you zoom in and out too much I'm sure they're saying that is they're zooming in and out you know as much as possible but hey you know whatever so there we go last thing I want to do then is just make a new layer at the top and sign this guy and we will be done with today's video so there you go the letter H as a horse. I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed today's video, if you got some value out of it, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications. You can get alerted when I post new videos. Got more in this series coming up next month. I'll be going to London for the big Procreate announcement. So you don't want to miss out on that. And the way that you can make sure that you don't is hitting that bell to subscribe to the notifications so you can get alerted. So thanks so much for watching today. If you do follow along with any of the tutorials, I definitely urge you to post your work online. And if you're on Instagram or Twitter, X threads, what have you, definitely share it there and tag me at BJ Dell so I can see them and check them out. Love seeing what you guys do, uh, what you're able to come up with by following along. So thanks so much. Brings a lot of joy. Uh, that's it for today. I can also be found online, bjdell.com. So until next time, keep creating.